Ireland against Japan. A little bit of a rematch from the 2019 Rugby World Cup. Uh, it's got a lot to like about this game, to be fair. I know the British and Irish Lions are kind of the big news story in world rugby at the moment, but there is other rugby on, and uh, Ireland taking on Japan should never be one to miss, even it is, if it is at 2 o'clock in the morning here in New Zealand on, uh, on Sunday. I think that's like 3 p.m. local time in Ireland, so it's an afternoon game. Uh, hopefully we get some sunny weather and an entertaining game of rugby. I'll go through the lineups, uh, some of the kind of head-to-head -head stuff between these two sides. Uh, predictions, I should say, if you fancy yourself a pretty decent predictor, I'll put a link to the Super Brew Predictions game uh, in the comments if you fancy yourself as a um, pretty knowledgeable rugby head. Uh, get yourself in on the predictions. That one's free to play. And... Um, yeah, you guys can let me know your thoughts on how this game is going to go. As I mentioned, Rugby World Cup 2019, it was 19 points to 12 in favor of Japan. So there's a little bit of a score to be settled, I would imagine, for Ireland. But we've got to remember, these guys are without their British and Irish Lions. But they are at home, so they should still be fancying themselves uh, over a team ranked six places below them on the World Rugby Rankings. Japan at 10th and Ireland are in 4th. I think we're finally starting to see under uh, Andy Farrell a little bit of the way his uh, his team is starting to shape up. And it's good that he's he's continuing to give some time, maybe forced to, with the Lions guys out, but uh, some of the young guns in Ireland as well. But yeah, the lineups, uh, Kilcoyne, Kelleher, and Bielam is the front row. It's obviously not looking quite as kind of traditional powerhouse front row without the likes of Healy, who's not on the Lions tour, but he's just having a wee rest and, uh, you know, Tyg Furlong, who is on the Lions tour, but we will, and Porter as well, uh, injured. But we'll expect Kukoin and uh, Bielam to really front up. I know Bielam gets a little bit of criticism from some fans about maybe lacking that bit of oomph at scrum time. Uh, Kelleher, though, is a guy who's definitely going to benefit from some, some minutes at test level because he seems like he is going to be the business going forward uh, in the number two jersey in Ireland in future. So... Uh, yeah, every minute that guy can get a test level is a minute well spent. Um, Delan and James Ryan are the lock and duo. Now, James Ryan was maybe unlucky to miss out on the Lions tour in the first instance. Then Alan Wynn Jones gets injured and you're thinking maybe James Ryan is the next cab off the rank. And then you hear that he's injured and he's not going to be able to be fit. And then suddenly he's back fit and ready to play for Ireland. So I don't know what's going on. I know uh, Ireland fans and the man himself probably pretty gutted he's not on the Lions tour, but I honestly think if he is the guy who's going to take over as captain after Johnny Sexton decides to hang up the boots, I think giving him some time as captain now is going to be beneficial. I think he will really, really grow uh, as a leader, leading these guys against a solid uh, you know, uh, opposition with a bit of a, as I mentioned, a bit of spice in the match. Like they, they can't go in and lose this one, so... Yeah, to add a bit of pressure, I think, will do well for his development. I mean, he's already had a hell of a career at his age, but yeah, this will do him well. Omahani, another experienced captain who can help guide him along, is at six. Van der Flair will get through a million tackles at seven, and Kalen Doris, with that skill set of his, is at eight. The number eight question is still one that's a little bit open with CJ Stunder having retired, but Doris is a different player, but he's one guy certainly putting his hands up. Uh, good hands he's got, to be fair. Uh, Gibson Park and Carberry's the 19 combo. Maybe I'm a bit more excited to see Carberry than I am Gibson Park. I am excited to see Craig Casey is on the bench. Uh, I know Gibson Park has kind of paid his dues uh, with Leinster. But yeah, that's um, that's about as far as I can go with that. I mean, is he a top-class international nine? I'm still not convinced. But maybe that's just because I saw him kind of... I don't want to say fizzle out, but he, he was okay at Super Rugby level. I know he's he's grown as a player over in Ireland, so uh, fair play to him. Give him a crack. Carberry, though, is class, and he needs he's another guy who needs more minutes with six than kind of having a rest over the summer. McCloskey and Farrell, it's a bloody big midfield at 12 and 13, so look out the Japanese uh, midfielders, and uh, especially Tamura as well. I would be running to him all day long if I was those two fellas. And uh, Stockdale, Lama, and Keenan is a very exciting back three. Keenan is very safe under the high ball. Uh, Lama's footwork is phenomenal. And uh, Stockdale still has the pace and power. And he 
definitely looks better when he's playing on the wing instead of at fullback, I reckon. Uh, the bench, like I mentioned, uh, Craig Casey's there. That's great news. Gavin Coombs is going to get his first game. He is potentially another guy who's going to fill in that number eight jersey going forward. He seems like a proper unit of a man. Bumps off tacklers for fun. Uh, Ryan Baird's another one to get some minutes into leading into the World Cup in a couple of years. Uh, Billy Burns, Shane Daly are there as well. For Japan, remember they did play the British and Irish Lions last week. Um, they had a pretty poor first half, but looked much better in the second half. So if that second half team shows up, Ireland could be in for a proper battle. And the majority of these guys, I think it's only like eight of the guys from Ireland played in that 2019 game. Whereas, what is it? How many from this team? Oh, that's a lot. A lot of them played at that last World Cup. The majority, I would say. It must be like 14. Yeah, majority of these guys played Ireland at that World Cup game. Uh, Inigaki, Sakate, and Kuz, the same front row as last week, and all them played in 2019. Uh, Van der Vault and Moore get through a heap of tackles, especially James Moore, also played in 2019. And Leach, Labaskakni, and Jimeno are 6, 7, and 8, and all played in that game in 2019. Uh, more recently, though, playing the British Irish Lions last week, Jimeno was immense when he came off the bench. I think he was second overall for their run meters from their forwards and he came on for only half the game so it kind of tells you the impact he can have he scored their try uh as well Lappi's Lovis he maybe didn't get through as many tackles as we would expect to see from him but him and Josh van der Fleer will be going head to head to see who can get more tackles because that's kind of the game they play uh Saito gets a start he was on the bench last week at number nine Tamura is still there at number 10 uh Nakamura and Lafayette at 12 and 13 consistent from last week and uh Fafita Masariwa and Matsushima are the back three so a little bit of a change in the back three Matsushima shifts from the wing to fullback he also missed a few tackles or did old Matsushima I think he's credited with getting one whereas missing three last week which is 25 percent and pretty bad but his ball in hand numbers are phenomenal he was their top run meter guy with 100 plus uh he had eight defenders beaten and four clean breaks against the British and Irish Lions. That's pretty bloody solid. Um, Siosaya Fafita, the left winger, I think it was his first game for Japan last week. And yeah, defensively looked a bit suspect. So that may be an area that um, Jordan Lama looks to to get some space around because, uh, yeah, he was six tackles made, four missed as well, which is also not the best kind of return. Uh, Masarewa on the right wing, it's his first game for Japan. Uh, Fijian guy, I think he's been called up for Fiji, but maybe declined the call in the past. He's been in Japan for a long time, previously played in Super Rugby with the Sunwolves. His footwork is one to rival Jordan Lama. Like he is he is very dangerous, so uh, Stockdale had better be looking for a fleet-footed guy coming at him because Masarewa has got a hell of a step if you haven't seen him play. Uh, the bench is Horikoshi Miller, Ivalu, Cornelson, Tatafu. Tatafu was the top guy to get run meters for the uh, the Japanese last week, and he was also on the bench. He's still on the bench, so he's very much a guy to come off the bench and just absolutely go kind of hammer and tongs at you. So look out for him. Shigeno drops to the bench. Matsuda is there, and Shane Gates comes into the side. So it's a... Five forwards, three backs thing, rather than 6-2 as it was last week. Uh, Japan last week conceded too many turnovers. That's one area that I'm sure when the uh, Irish coaching staff would have looked at the tape, they would have identified that as maybe an area of vulnerability. Also, the line-out success rate was in the 80s for Japan, which is like, okay, but... Um, the Lions were at 100, so that's maybe an area where they need to uh, step up their game as well. Uh, the last five games, it's 4-1 to one to Ireland, but obviously that most important and most recent one was in Japan's favor. The average score is 38-17 to Ireland, but that's going all the way back to 2005. And uh, Japan is certainly a much better team in 2021 than it was in 2005. Uh, the bookies have got Ireland by 10 points. The rugby forecast algorithm says 18 but again, um, some of that data it's using for the algorithm may be looking at some of those way more historical results. But then again, uh, Ireland without their Lions, so you never know. 2 a.m. is a pretty hairy time. Um, we'll see how I manage to get through this one. Uh, whether I watch it delayed or live remains to be seen. But anyway, you guys let me know your thoughts. How do you think this one's going to go? Do you think Ireland uh, at home, despite the fact they're missing their Lions and uh, they are a game behind the Japanese in terms of their preparations. I think they will go well, or do you think they may struggle early and do the reverse of what happened last week? Do you think Ireland maybe in the second half pushed through? Japan, 
Can they continue this one game winning streak over Ireland? Or do you think it comes to a one and done run? Uh, you guys let me know your thoughts. Do drop the video a like if you got this far through it. Um, support the channel on Patreon. Link in the description. Sign up for Super Brew Predictions. Uh, buy me a beer down in the description. Any of that stuff. Helpful. You guys enjoy yourselves. Watch the rugby and uh, I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.